at the foot of the ladder, the limb footbeds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, uh, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Ground mass uh, is very fine. Can you believe it's been over 50 years since the last time we landed on the moon? And with all the technology we have today, it makes anyone wonder what happened. Do we have plans in the future to revisit our satellite? Or was it just a big set of expensive hoaxes, like what a lot of skeptics have speculated since it first happened? It started out as a fierce clash of superpowers in the midst of the Cold War, and America needed to emerge victorious. But it wasn't just about national pride. The moon landings had implications far beyond politics. It gave birth to a new era of innovation and technology. Hey there, fellow truth seekers. Welcome back to Why on YouTube. Let's start back on July 16, 1969. Millions of eyes were glued to their screens as Apollo 11 launched from Kennedy Space Center. Since that day, NASA has sent 12 astronauts to explore the moon. Imagine those incredible scenes, men hopping across the lunar surface, collecting samples and planting the American flag. It was a time of discovery and scientific triumph. But after Apollo 17, everything changed. Why? Was it simply a lack of interest? Or were there deeper reasons at play? In the early days of space exploration, funds were abundant. The space race was on, and nations were pouring money into their space programs. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. But once we achieved the goal of landing on the moon, the funding dried up. Federal budgets shifted, and NASA's focus turned to other priorities like the Space Shuttle Program. After the moon landing, NASA shifted their focus to low Earth orbit missions, space stations, and robotic exploration of Mars and beyond. We didn't just lose focus on the moon, we set our sights on the stars, with missions like Mars rovers and the Hubble telescope reshaping our understanding of the universe. Now don't get me wrong, exploring Mars is exciting, but it raises the question, what about our celestial neighbor? And it's not just NASA. Private companies like SpaceX are now taking center stage in space exploration. The first launch of space exploration technology's Falcon 9 rocket from Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station occurred at 2.45 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on June 4th.
This was a commercial launch by SpaceX as a pathfinder for the first NASA Commercial Orbital Transportation Services development flight planned for later this summer. Future cargo to the International Space Station eventually will be carried by commercially developed launch vehicles, including the Falcon 9, for NASA. Do you like what you're watching so far? Hit that like button, share the video, and subscribe to Why on YouTube. NASA's Artemis program is set to land the first woman and the next man on the moon by 2024, which is revolutionary. NASA's Artemis program also aims to not just to land on the moon, but to build a sustainable presence there, creating a launching pad for exploration of Mars. The moon now serves as a critical testbed for developing new technologies and practices before we send humans far beyond. That's right. Soon the moon might not just be a destination, but a hub for human expansion into the solar system. Now imagine this. Just like our Apollo predecessors, astronauts will be conducting scientific research, exploring the lunar surface, and possibly discovering new resources. The data we gather will not only help us understand more about our moon, but also prepare us for one day settling on Mars. What's even better, Artemis isn't just a national effort, it's global. Countries around the world are partner nations in this mission, showing that when it comes to space, we can achieve so much more together. After the Apollo 11 mission, some skeptics began suggesting that the U.S. government had orchestrated the whole thing to win the space race against the Soviet Union. This notion became even more popular in the 1970s, fueled by documentaries and books that questioned the authenticity of the moon landing. Millions of years ago, before the human race existed, an adventure began. An adventure that ultimately leads man to confront his own destiny in an odyssey of exploration. Stanley Kubrick, the genius behind films that pushed the boundaries of imagination. People theorize that after directing 2001, A Space Odyssey, which featured innovative special effects, Kubrick became the mastermind behind faking the moon landing. But is this just a fringe theory, or is there more? Look at these visuals. Kubrick revolutionized how we viewed space through his art. Some conspiracists argue that NASA approached him to create a cinematic version of the moon landing. They claim the space race was too important and needed to be won at all costs. Other key arguments against the landing include the lack of stars in the photos. Another is the fluttering flag.
Also, shadows appearing to diverge or have different light sources and spotlight effects. All of these theories and many others, no matter how interesting they are, have all been debunked. We have lunar rocks that were brought back to Earth, over 800 pounds of them from these missions. Scientific analysis has proven their origins are from the moon. It seems that for some, believing in a conspiracy is more enticing than accepting a monumental achievement of human ingenuity. But let's consider who benefits from proliferation of these theories. Mistrust in government feeds a modern narrative fueled by social media, better suited for clicks than facts. In the end, while questioning and skepticism are essential for progress, we also need to embrace and respect the profound achievements of science and exploration. The moon landings were not just a moment for America. It was a victory for all humankind. That will lead us closer to the future of humanity and the exploration of space, and even interstellar space. We hope you enjoyed this episode as we tackled the question, why have we not returned to the moon since the Apollo missions? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into the world's most intriguing mysteries, myths, and conspiracies. And remember, keep asking why.